record to your computer, right? You're recording to your computer, right, Brother Chiwa? Yes, okay, I'll record my computer as well. Okay, let me record my computer as well. Okay, good. All right, let's begin. Okay. All right, hello everyone. Okay, so that's 40 plus of you. Maybe a few more will join in uh, as, as the session pro progresses, okay? Hi everyone, my name is Wei Ken. I am going to be the, uh, you might call me the teacher, but uh, actually I'm not quite the teacher la, for this session. I, I, I might be called the study group facilitator for this session. So I noticed that some of you are, are so what I'm trying to say is that the age gap is quite large here, right? So some of you are younger, some of you are older, but that's fine, yeah, because uh, all of us, uh, you know, there, there's no age barrier here. Uh, all of us can take the exam and all of us can learn the Dhamma. Okay, so before that, I am going to just very quickly begin by chanting Namo Tassa three times and all of you can uh, follow along uh, by folding your palms and chanting Namo Tassa three times. And now I'll start sharing screen. Homage to the Buddha. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Homage to him the accomplished one, the blessed one, the supremely awakened one. All right, let me uh, share my screen. Okay, cool. So welcome to the English study group. This is an online tutorial for the Malaysian Buddhist examination. This study group or this tutorial will be four weeks, yeah, uh, every Monday in August. So the last session in this tutorial will be on 30th of August, which is Monday. So what happens on Tuesday? Do you guys know? <laughs> Do you guys know what happens on Tuesdays, Tuesday after the last class or the last study group session? Sorry? Someone say something. Okay. Exam. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you, sister. <laughs> exam. Yes, you will have your exam on that day, right? So right after your last session, uh, you have your exam, which is on, on Tuesday. So that's good. Now, although it's four sessions, I want to make it clear that uh, we are very friendly people, which means you can feel free to reach out to us anytime. If you have questions, you can uh, you can text us, you can WhatsApp us, you can WhatsApp in the group as well. Then uh, we can try to answer your questions uh, when we're free. Okay, so... If you want to, if you really need more help or more support, if you want to schedule an extra classes or things like that, we can try to arrange depending on the timing. Okay, so if you really need help, you want more, you want more guidance, you want more support, you can also try to schedule for extra classes. However, I want to emphasize that again, I'm not the teacher for the session, I'm only a facilitator. I won't be I won't be explaining all the content of the syllabus because we won't have time for that. All right, we we, we definitely don't have time to finish everything in the syllabus. What we do have time is to clarify some of your doubts or clarify some of your questions. So if you are doing your revision, if you're practicing the questions, then if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. That's where we can help, okay? I also want to clarify that I'm not an expert, okay? Some of the things, if I don't know, what I can promise you is I will try to find the, the answers for you. Okay, good. Let's start with some introduction. All right, hi everyone, my name is Wei Ken. So just to introduce myself uh, and, and the roles I play, I am from Mitta. MITTA uh, stands for the Malaysia Yobana Theravada Transformative Alliance. It is basically a network and alliance of youth groups, Buddhist youth groups. So some of the, some of the societies or the youth groups that are in MITTA, some of you might already know. So SJBAYS, SJBA Youth Section, one of the youth groups there. D2Y, another youth group there. Uh, uh, BADI, Banda Utama Dhamma Duta Youth, and many more. So there are a number of youth groups Dhamma in MITTA. MITTA is the youth group. Uh, Mita is the youth arm of the Theravada Buddhist Council of Malaysia, TBCM. All right, I'm also from the Putra Heights Buddhist Society uh, Youth Fellowship. 
So every week we have Sutta study and Dhamma discussions. All right, so if you're interested to know more, you can also feel free to WhatsApp me and text me. Okay, so that's my site. All right, so this uh, program, this tutorial is brought to you by Mita as well as with YBAM, KL and Selangor State Liaison Committee. All right, so YBAM, KL and Selangor SLC. Now, uh, Brother Chiwa, you can see he's, he's sort of the technical... <laughs> yep, yes, you can see Brother Chiwa waving. He's sort of the technical assistant. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's the technical guy. He's helping me to manage this. And he has been texting all of you, right? I, I'm sure many of you have received a message from him. And that's how you, that's how you get to join uh, the WhatsApp group as well. So if you're not yet in the WhatsApp group, please let us know. You can leave your number uh, with us. Okay, you can text uh, Brother Chiwa, you can text me. Okay, then we'll add you into the WhatsApp group, okay? So if you're not in the WhatsApp group, remember to get into the WhatsApp group because we'll be sending out information, sending out resources. Uh, make some. Uh, I will be giving you guys notes as well for study notes, as well as quizzes, you know, like quizzes for you to practice, uh, practice some of the questions. Okay, so you have to know, uh, you have to be in the WhatsApp group. Okay, cool. So, Brother Frankie Lo is the chairman of YBM KL and Selangor State Liaison Committee, and Brother Wong Chiwa, uh, the secretary of YBM KL and Selangor State Liaison Committee. Okay, so uh, uh, TBCM Mita, the youth, the youth group, as well as uh, YBM KL and Selangor SLC, are collaborating to bring you this program. Okay, so I'm very, very grateful actually to YBM for for this initiating this effort. Okay. So uh, if you want to know more about our respective organizations, if you want to know more about Mita and PHBS, if you want to know more about YBM, feel free to reach out to us. We, can, we have many other events, many other programs as well uh, to, to uh, discuss the Dharma together, to learn the Dharma in a community. So feel free to reach out to us. Okay, so that's the introduction. Now, let's get to the exam, uh, which is what you want to know, right? I need to uh, check very quickly. Uh, before that, before that, before I go to the question, I need all of you to please rename yourself. Please rename yourself to the question, uh, to your, sorry, rename yourself to your uh, name that you registered for, for, for this, for this um, event, for this program or for the exam, lah, your full name, lah, basically. And behind your name, you could also add, you could also add uh, which stage you are. So preliminary, junior or senior or higher, possibly. Okay, so that's, if you can do that right now, I'll give everyone one minute to rename yourself. Okay, I'll give you guys one minute to do that. Okay. Angel, I already renamed myself. That's great. That's great. If you've already renamed yourself, then it's okay. We'll just wait for other people to other people to uh, do it. Okay. When are we gonna learn Mahayana's? <laughs> you want to learn about Mahayana Buddhism? Is that right? No, I want to learn about all of this. Okay, you want to learn about everything? That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, I will be teaching some things. I can't teach you everything, but uh, you will be referring to the textbook for more information. Okay. Now, everyone is renamed already. Now, I want all of you to do this. Huh? The question is, which stage did you sign up for? Is it preliminary, junior, senior, or higher? Can you please type in the chat right now? So type preliminary or type junior or type senior. Type it right now so that uh, Brother Chiwa can have a look through. I also want to look through how many are in preliminary now, how many are junior. So I'm seeing... Okay, a lot of one. So one is uh one is preliminary, then two is junior, no? Okay, I see one three. I see one senior level. Okay, so most of you are one uh, preliminary level, a few junior level. I can also see, but one a uh, senior level. I noticed one senior level. For higher. Four is higher, but I I don't think anyone is taking higher level. Is anyone taking the higher stage? So far, I haven't seen anyone. All right, so I want to find the one. Hang on, uh, hang on. Uh, let me look for the one with senior one. Actually, uh, you know what? Let me not look for it. Uh, could, could the brother or sister just unmute yourself and say hi? <laughs> Who is taking senior level? I saw one senior level, right? Brother, sister, could you just unmute yourself and say hi? I, I want to uh, just Hello. check who you are. Hello? Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya? Yes. So you yeah. are sister. I actually still can't see you. Where are you? Uh, Sister Saw. My, my surname Saw. Sister Saw. Yes, Sister yeah. Saw. Thank you. So you uh, are taking the senior level paper. Uh, just very quickly. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, just very quickly. Uh, how much uh, help do you need? Like what specific kind of help do you need? Do you need, do you need me to start from the very uh, basics? Or are you, do you already have some uh, basic foundational knowledge in Buddhism and you're looking to, to do the higher, higher level questions? 
just just a short introduction. Do you have? Uh, I, I I'm new to the section two, the subjective part. I'm quite quite new. Is it? Uh, consider okay lah, okay lah. I okay, can so catch up lah. Okay, can. All right. So mm. I'll, I'll tell you what, sister. So uh, I have, I have a. Uh, I have a few select. I have selected a few questions, so I'll send it uh, to the. Uh, I'll send it. Wait, what should I do now? Should I send it to the chat? Wait, let me. I have a link. It's okay. actually uh, this a, a few selected questions for the senior level paper. If you want to check it out and if you want to have a practice, you can do it. Let me send it in the chat. Yeah. Okay, I've sent it to the chat. All okay. right. So if you want to go to that, this is the senior level paper. Uh, not not uh, not preliminary and not junior. So okay. if you want to try out the questions, you can do it. Then after that, uh, at, at uh, 9.30 p.m., we'll have a Q&A session. And if you have some questions or have some doubts, you can come and ask. So you, okay. it's up to you. It's up to you. Yeah. Really so you can, you, can, uh, you can listen in to the session because I'll be covering the junior and preliminary topics first. So if you want to listen to that, you can. If you want to spend the time practicing the past year questions, also can. These are all past year questions. So I'll leave it up to you. Is that, is that, uh, is that okay, Sister Song? Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. Okay, I'll take a look first. Appreciate okay. your help. Thank you. Excellent, no problem. If you need more specific guidance for senior level, uh, because the questions are a bit harder, of course, you can also text me. La, uh, okay. Because this okay. class is more focused on premium and junior, but I, I'm also very happy to help la, wherever mm, I can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you in advance. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Sister Saw. Okay. All right. So apart from Sister Saw, I think everyone else is junior and preliminary. Okay, good. That means we are roughly at the same level. That's good. That's good. Okay. For some of you, maybe next year you can try challenging yourself uh, for the higher level. <laughs> you can learn from Sister Saw. Maybe next year you can. Uh, try the senior level if you want to challenge yourself. Okay, no worries. Let's uh, let's continue. Now, why does yes? Why yes. does Thor have to be in preliminary? Did he learn it? Learn, learn Buddhism late? I don't understand your question. Repeat your question, brother or sister. No, can Thor? No, the T O H the and S G B A. Did he learn Buddhism late? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You you might want to you might want to check with him or her. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, thanks for the question. Now, uh, at about 9:30 p.m., so the les the lesson will be about uh, 45 minutes. But at 9:30 p.m., we'll have we'll have a Q and A. So all of you have some doubts, you can ask. Okay. Now let's look at the syllabus. Are uh, very important syllabus. If you are junior or you are preliminary, you have to know all these things. I repeat, ah. Uh, if you are junior or preliminary, you have to know all these things because all this is a preliminary syllabus. However, however, if you are at junior level, you need to know a bit more, okay? You need to know a bit more content. So let's look at the preliminary stage syllabus first, okay? Now, number one, you need to know the structure of the syllabus is divided into three, all right? The Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. The Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. These three are known as the three refuges or the threefold refuge, okay? Or they are known as the triple gem, the three jewels. So these are the refuge, these are the jewels that we venerate, that we treasure as Buddhists, okay? So number one, the Buddha. The Buddha, you will have to know for preliminary level, you would have to know the life of the Buddha from the birth, from his birth until his enlightenment. Okay, now the Dhamma, what is the Dhamma? The Dhamma is the teaching of the Buddha, the message of the Buddha. Now, what do you need to know under this Dhamma for the exam? Number one, you need to know what are the three refuges. Ti Sarana. Ti, ti uh, means three. Ti means three. Ti Sarana. Sarana means refuge. You need to know the three refuge and you need to know what is Vandana. Vandana means paying homage or paying respect. So we pay Vandana to the Tisarana. We pay respect and homage to the three refuges. Okay, so you need to know this. And then after that, you need to know some concepts of morality. Some concepts of morality, okay? Morality means the teachings on virtue, the teachings on doing good and avoiding evil. That is morality, okay? So number one, you need to know Pancha Sila. Pancha Sila. Sila means morality or virtue or integrity. Pancha means five. Okay, I repeat that. Uh, ti means three. Pancha means five. So Pancha Sila is the five precepts. 
we will learn that uh, in the uh, in the course of this tutorial. After that, you have to know dasa kusala kama. Dasa kusala kama. Dasa means ten. Dasa means ten. Panja is five. Dasa is ten. Kusala is meritorious or wholesome. Meritorious or wholesome or skillful. Meritorious, wholesome, skillful. Kusala. Now, akusala, akusala is the opposite. Akusala means unwholesome, unvirtuous, demeritorious, okay? Or unskillful. Unskillful, demeritorious, unwholesome, unrighteous, unvirtuous. That is akusala. Kama means your actions. Kama means what you do, okay? Actions. So dasa kusala kama is the 10 meritorious deeds, the 10 skillful actions, okay? So that is under the Dhamma. And finally, under the Sangha, what is the meaning of the Sangha? Sangha, the word Sangha means community or the word order, okay? The order or the community of the disciples of the Blessed One, which is the Buddha, okay? So this is the Sangha. Oh, now, there are many... the 10 mysterious actions, because I never learned about that. It's okay, that's good. So you will, you will, you will learn it. You will learn it, okay? All right, now, when it comes to the Sangha... There are many disciples of the Buddha, okay, in history, many, many disciples. Of course, for the exam, you, you, you are not expected to know all of them. But for the preliminary level, you have to know some of the most important disciples, okay? Sariputta, Mongalana, Mahakasapa, Angulimala, Rahula, Ananda. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six disciples you have to know for preliminary level. Okay, now for junior level, let's look at what, what extra you need to know, Okay. Prelim prelim uh, preliminary level, you need to know from birth to enlightenment. Yeah, For junior level, you need to know from birth to Mahaparinibbana. The Mahaparinibbana is the final Nibbana of the Buddha, the final passing away of the Buddha. Okay? Now, under the Dhamma, you need to know all these plus a few more things, which is Atanga Sila. Just now we learned Panja Sila, five precepts. For junior stage, you need to know Atanga Sila. Atanga, Atta, Atta means eight. Eight, eight precepts, okay? Now, after that, you have to learn the dasa parami. Remember what dasa means? Dasa means 10, all right? Parami means perfections or parami. Parami followers has five, not eight. Okay, brother or sister, uh, could you please uh, ask your questions later on? Uh, I, will have a, I will have a time for questions, yeah? Don't worry, don't worry. I'll, I'll let you ask your questions later. Okay, cool. Thank you, yeah? Now, dasa parami, 10 perfections. And finally... Chattari Arya Satchani. Okay, what is Chattari? Chattari means four. Chattari, four. Arya means noble. Arya means noble. Satcha, Satcha means truth. So Chattari Arya Satcha means the four noble truths. So you need to know at least what are the four noble truths. And finally, there's one sutta you need to know called the Mangala Sutta. Mangala means the discourse. Sorry, Mangala means blessings. Sutta means the discourse. So Mangala Sutta means the discourse on blessings. All right, so these are the additional things you need to know for junior level. And finally, for Sangha, you need to know the key disciples and you need to know also Upasaka and Upasika. So the monastic disciples of the Buddha are called Bhikkhu and Bhikkhuni. Bhikkhu means the male monastics, which are the monks. Bhikkhuni means the female monastics, who are the nuns, okay? The monks and nuns, the bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. Now, all of these, all of these key disciples, they're all bhikkhus. They're all bhikkhus. They're all monastic. Sariputta, Mogana, Kasapa, Angulimala, Rahula, Ananda. They're all bhikkhus. Uh, but for the junior stage, you need to know a little bit more about Upasaka and Upasika. Upasaka, Upasika means lay disciples. Lay male disciples, Upasaka. Lay female disciples, Upasika. Lay men, lay women. Okay? So you need to know a bit more. Okay. What's next? Okay, now I want to ask all of you this question. Do you know what is the number one tip to score in the exam? Do you know? Can everyone type in the chat right now? What do you think is the number one tip to score in the exam? <laughs> okay. Uh, I got an answer. Yeah, what's your answer? Uh, study hard and take it seriously. Study hard and take it seriously. That's good. That's a correct answer. You need to do that. Anyone... Uh, Type it in the type in the chat. Type all your answers in the chat. What is the number one tip to score well in the exam? Okay, I'm seeing more and more correct answers. 
Okay, so all of your answers are correct. No, wrong, uh, all your answers are correct. But this is the most important tip, lah. Since you are, you only have about two to three weeks, uh, before the the, the actual exam. I'll tell you the number one tip. But the number one tip is actually do the past years. <laughs> that's the that's the most important tip. That's the most important tip. Okay, do the past year and, uh, when you do the past year, notice what are the important topics. What are the important exams topics? before? Sorry. Notice what are the important topics. Yeah, means uh, some of the topics that that uh they would they would sorry some of the topics are repeated a lot. For example, the Buddha. What are who? What are the important events in the life of Buddha? When you practice the passage, you realize oh you know this this these topics are important. Okay. Another one is you can notice some of the repeated themes or ideas, like you know the four noble truths. For example, the three refuges and so on, or the five precepts and so on. So these these questions, when you do it a lot, you will see it repeated. Okay. Now I will pause for questions. I'll pause for five minutes for questions. Anyone has any questions, you can raise your hand and you can ask questions. Okay. Right now, yes. I'll pause for questions. Anyone has any questions? Please click raise hand. Ah. Then uh. What after Mahi? Okay. What is after Mahi? Sorry, brother, um, sister, can you raise your hand? I, I cannot see you. Brother or sister, you can ask your question now, but can you click on raise hand? Do you guys know how to click on raise hand? You go to reactions, you go to the bottom of your screen, you click on raise hand like this. You click on raise hand, then you can, I can see you. Or else I, I don't know where you are. Wait, uh. Okay, yes, brother, law mean, law mean law. Yes. You, what is your question, no, brother? brother I'm this yes, yes, your question? Brother, yeah, your question? No, I'm not brother. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? You can unmute yourself. Um, you have, yeah, I'm not a question? brother, but I can tell my question. Um, what happens after Mahinaripana? What happens after Mahaparinibbana? Is that your mm -hmm. question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so until junior level, you only need to know until Mahaparinibbana. If you want to know what happens after that, that's higher level, which is senior or higher stage. Okay, brother, you are taking which uh, stage? Preliminary or junior level? Okay, it's all right. So apart from uh, brother Law Min Lok, any other questions? Anyone have any questions until this point? Okay, you are, no one is raising hands, so it's good. Huh? Okay, someone is asking in the chat, how to get past year papers? How to get, yeah, brother Ong, yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's my question. How to get the past year question. Okay, good. Uh, some of you who don't have the past year questions, we will send the link later into the chat, okay? Into the WhatsApp group, sorry, into the WhatsApp group. So make sure you're in the WhatsApp group. Uh, I, uh, brother, I think brother uh, brother Chiwa might, might do that later. Or oh, I can do that later also. Yeah, okay? Good question, very important. Now, those of you who don't have the past year questions, please make sure you get the past year questions because that is the fastest way to practice, okay? Good, uh, thanks. That, that question is important, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, just, just click on raise hand. Okay. No questions so far? Okay, good. Let's begin with the lesson. Okay. We'll be covering the basics today. Today, very basic. But next session, you know, over, over time, we'll go into more and more deeper topics. So just make sure you, you know, master today's topic. Very important. Okay. And also, I want to be very clear. Yeah? I won't be covering everything in the syllabus because I don't have that time. So I, I need you to also read the textbook and practice the passive papers so that we can save time. I don't have to cover everything. When you do the past year papers, you have questions, you can come to us. Then we can save time. You guys understand, huh? get it, huh? very clear. Huh? Okay, good. Let's begin with the, with the key topics. Huh? All right. Let me share my screen. Hang on, yeah, guys. All right, good. Okay, cool. Now, let's begin with the life of the Buddha. Let's begin with the life of the Buddha. This one, all levels must know. Whether you're preliminary, whether you're junior, senior, or higher, this one you have to know. The life of the Buddha. 
Okay, we'll try to cover as many as we can. Uh, but I'll also be telling the story of the Buddha. And although this is an exam, and of course we want to score well, correct or not, we want to score you know, all the questions correctly. However, it is also an opportunity, brothers and sisters, for us to reflect on the life of the Buddha, right? Not just for a matter of scoring well in the exams, but also for a matter of, for us to understand who is this teacher? Who is this Lord? Who is this master? Why do we respect him? Why do we follow him? Why do we call him the Buddha? Okay, so it's also a chance for us to reflect. So I hope that you guys don't, don't have too much pressure on yourself for the exam, yeah? Uh, the exam is an opportunity for us to know the facts. But to know the facts is not, uh, not enough. It's not enough. When we know the facts, we, we must also learn to reflect on the facts. When we reflect on the facts, then we realize how we want to apply the Dhamma in our lives, okay? So now let's begin with the life of Buddha. More than 2,000 years ago in the Lumbini Park, under the full moon of Vesaka. Now, this month is August. A few months ago, in the month of May, we celebrate uh, Vesak Day. We celebrate Vesak Day. Vesak Day, we celebrate the birth, the enlightenment, and the Parinibbana of the Buddha. Now, why do we call it Vesak Day? Why do we call it Vesak Day? Because Vesak is actually the name of the month, the month in the Indian Buddhist calendar. Right, so the month is actually called Vesaka. So sometimes Vesak Day, you hear the word Vesaka Puja because Vesaka is the name of the month. And Vesak Day falls under the full moon day of the month of May or the month of Vesaka. All right, so under the full moon of Vesaka, a child was born to King Sudodana and Queen Maya of the Sakya clan. All right, now King Sudodana is the name the, the, the name of the father of the Buddha. So this one you have to know, uh, exam you, would, you have to know. King Sudonada. He is the king of Kapilavatu. He is the king of Kapilavatu. And he is the king of the Sakya clan. What does clan mean? So clan is like uh, your tribe. You know your tribe. So for example, I give example. Uh, most of you are Chinese here, I think. So like Chinese, you have like uh, Guangdong Ren, you have Taozhou Ren, you have Kezia Ren, correct or not? Uh, whether you're Hakka, Hokkien, Teochew, uh, Cantonese, and so on. Uh, it's like that, a bit like that. The concept is a bit similar. So King Sudodana is from the Sakya clan. Queen Maya is not from the Sakya clan. Queen Maya is from another clan. But Queen Maya was married, of course, to King Sudodana. Okay? Now, so they are in the Sakya clan. All right? And the Sakya clan, the capital city uh, is Kapilavatu. Kapilavatu. Now, when Queen Maya, uh, when Queen Maya was pregnant, with her son, she was going to travel back to her to her parents' place, meaning to her hometown. Okay, however, she didn't manage to reach the hometown. Uh, around halfway through the journey, they arrived at the place called Lumbini Park. The place called Lumbini Park. Okay, so it is at the place Lumbini Park that Queen Maya gave birth to this son. All right, to this child, and this child would grow up, of course, to become the Buddha. As soon as the Bodhisatta was born, the Bodhisatta is uh, someone who would become the Buddha. So at this point, uh, brothers and sisters, the child is not yet the Buddha, correct or not? The child is a baby, is a prince, you know, the, the son of a king. But at this point, he is called the Bodhisatta because he's not yet a Buddha. As soon as the Bodhisatta was born, he stood firmly with his feet on the ground then he took seven steps facing north, and with a white parasol held over him, he surveyed each quarter and uttered the words of the leader of the herd. I am the chief of the world. I am the best in the world. I am the foremost in the world. This is my last birth. Now there is no renewed existence for me. Now, what is the Pali for this? The answer is, go and find out. Go and find out. I'll find out from the textbook. Uh, I'm not sure if you need to, I'm not sure if you need to know the Pali for the for the exam, but it is useful to know anyway, right? It's a very beautiful Pali phrase. I am the chief of the world, I am the best in the world. This, this event uh, at the Buddha's at the Bodhisattva's birth is a foretelling of his future. I repeat, uh, this event at the birth of the Bodhisattva is a foretelling of his future. 
When he says, I am the chief of the world, I am the best in the world, this is foretelling his future to become the foremost spiritual teacher of the world. And when he said, this is my last birth, this is my last birth, this is foretelling his future of attainment of Nibbana. His future of the attainment of, the Nibba, of Nibbana. Because he would attain Nibbana uh, later on when he becomes the Buddha. Okay, good. When he was born, when he was born, there is this uh, spiritual practitioner. Uh, so when he was born, they were brought, uh, uh, you know, the mother was, and brought, brought the son back to the palace, of course. Now the mother, the mother passed away seven days after the Bodhisattva was born. This one important, huh? The mother, Queen Mahamaya, passed away seven days after the birth of the prince. So uh, King Sudodana, who is the father, married another woman who is actually the sister of Queen Mahamaya. The sister of Queen Mahamaya married <clears throat> King Sudodana, and her name is Mahapajapati Gotami. Mahapajapati Gotami. So she married, <clears throat> and then so she would become the stepmother or the foster mother of the prince. All right. Now, when the baby was a <clears throat> was a few days old, all right, just a few days old, Asita a highly attained spiritual practitioner visited the royal place. Upon seeing the child, so Asita was a very highly attained sage, you know, a wise man. So he could recognize, he could recognize the marks of a great man on the baby. He could see it. So when he sees the child, he rose from his seat. He stood up and he saluted the child. So this great sage has a mixed reaction, a mixed reaction. At first he smiled, but after that, he was sad. So why did he smile? The answer is, he could see that the baby would grow up to become a great spiritual teacher. But why did he, why was he sad? He was sad because... He will die before he gets enlightened. Very smart, very clever. That's the correct answer. Thank you. Asita the sage would pass away, would die before he would be able to see the Buddha become the Buddha. He would die before he would see the awakening of the Buddha. So he would not have the opportunity to hear his sublime Dhamma. Okay, this one is later on. Let me jump to another uh, jump to another slides. Let me jump to another slides. Hang on now. Brother Jiva said, "How's it going, Okay, <laughs> okay, <Rup. laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's carry on with the story. Okay, I want to point out that this one, uh, Kapilavatu. Kapilavatu is the uh, capital of the Sakya clan. I repeat, uh, Kapilavatu is the capital city of the Sakya clan. This one you have to know, uh. So King Sudodana Gotama and Queen Mahamaya. Now I repeat, uh, Gotam, uh, Let me clarify this, yeah. Gotama is the family name of the Buddha. Sudodana is the name of the father. Gotama is the family name. For example, uh, for example, my name is Kaur Wei Ken. Now, Wei Ken is my, my given name. My family name, which is my surname, is Kaur. Okay? So it's like that. Sudodana, Gotama. Sudodana is the name of the father. Gotama is the family name. Alright? So far, so good. Good. Let's uh, carry on. Asita said, my lord, he was talking to King Sudodana, yeah? my lord, the prince is destined to become the greatest spiritual teacher the world will ever know. This is good news. So the king said, that is why you smile, but why the sadness? So Asita said, because I would die before he attains awakening. I would not be able to benefit from his supreme wisdom. Now, five days after the birth of the prince, the king invited wise men to the royal residence for the naming ceremony. So now the king wants to give a name to his son, okay? Now, in the, <clears throat> in the naming ceremony, they named him Siddhartha. Siddhartha. This one, important, you must know. Siddhartha means wish fulfilled. One whose wishes will be fulfilled. That means someone who will reach his goal. Someone who will reach his aim. Someone who will fulfill his wishes. 
That is the meaning of Siddhartha. So the full name of the Buddha, of the prince, is Siddhartha Gautama. All right, Siddhartha is his given name. Gautama is his family name. Okay, Siddhartha Gautama. Now at the event of the naming ceremony, eight wise men, they examined the marks of the child. The marks means, uh, for example, the face, the ears, the feet, and so on. So what are the signs? What are the marks on this baby? Seven of them raised two fingers. They said they, they are foretelling the destiny of this baby. This child will grow up to become either a great king, a great king, or a great spiritual teacher. Now, let me pause here and ask all of you, brothers and sisters, if you have a choice, uh, if you have a choice, uh, let's, say, let's say you go and find a wise man. And these wise men uh, calculate your, look at your stars, you know, look at the stars and then calculate your destiny, measure your destiny. They say, ah, you have the future of becoming a great king. You will conquer the whole world or you will become a Buddha. You will become a great spiritual teacher. Think about it. Which one will choose? Um, <laughs> I want to be one? a great king instead. <laughs> you want to be a great king instead. Okay, this one won't come out in the exam. Huh? This one won't come out in the exam. You won't be writing an essay on it. However, it's for you to reflect. For you to reflect. What would you want? Which one would you choose? Okay, this one you can think about it. Huh? Later, maybe you want to share your answer later in this discussion session. Okay. However, out of the eight, remember, out of the eight wise men, only seven, seven of them raised two fingers. Two fingers. But one of them, the youngest and wisest among them, he only raised one finger. His name is Kondanya. Kondanya. He said, no, no, no. No two destinies. This child has one and only one destiny. He will become a spiritual teacher. He will become a Buddha, the supremely awakened one. All right. Now, when Siddhartha grew up, he was a prince, I remember. So he had the best education. You know, nowadays, uh, uh, many parents, they want their children to have good education, correct or not? So they will send their children to many different classes. So they'll go to learn piano, maybe. They'll go to learn music. They'll maybe go to learn uh, sports, all right? Maybe playing badminton, playing basketball. They might send their children to learn all different kinds of skills. Maybe they'll be learning art, right? Maybe they'll be learning uh, mathematics and science and so on. These are all good things, you know, because you want to give your child the best education. Of course, as a parent, you want that. Very good, no problem. But this is a prince, you know. He has the best education. Imagine uh, if you are the king. What kind of education would you give your child, you know? So Siddhartha grew up to be a handsome young man of great strength. So he had all the education. Now, uh, Siddhartha Gautama, the Sakya clan, he was born in a warrior caste. Let me type in the chat, huh? Warrior caste. Warrior caste, okay? Warrior caste uh, in, uh, in Pali is Katiya. Katiya. Let me type in the chat. Uh. Katiya. The Katiya clan. That means uh, they, many of them in the Katiya clan, in the Katiya caste, sorry, in the Katiya caste, they would be, you know, sending them, they would be sending people to be warriors, to be soldiers, right? To be in the military. So uh, Siddhartha Gautama also received uh, a military training, right? So he would be familiar with the arts of war, for example. He would be learning archery as well. So the yeah. skills of archery are highly valued, all right, in, in, the, in ancient India. Even today also, in many places, the skills of archery are valued, all right? Archery, uh, you, know, you know what's archery? Uh? Archery, let me type in the chat. Archery. Archery means you uh, shoot arrows, okay? Now, let's, let's go on. Now, however... Sudata Go Sudodana Gotama, Sudodana Gotama, the king, the father, he is a bit worried. He is a bit concerned because he knows that, uh, you know, people have predicted, wise men have predicted that one day this son would grow up to become a Buddha. But the king didn't want him to become the Buddha. The king wants him to become a king. The king wants him to take over his position, you know, to take over the throne. So he's a bit worried. Now, to prevent Siddhartha from thinking of leaving home, King Sudodana provided the best pleasures of life for Siddhartha. So imagine your life right now. Do you have good food in your life? Yeah, maybe. Sometimes you have good food. Sometimes your papa, mama bring you out uh, to eat uh, very good food. I don't know what's your favorite food. Maybe some of you like McDonald's. Maybe some of you like Pizza Hut. I I'm not sure. But anyway, your papa, mama sometimes bring you out to eat very good food. Uh, but, you know, 
Prince Siddhartha, his, his daddy mommy don't have to bring him out to, to eat food because they have the best chefs, the best cooks in the palace. They can cook the best food for him anytime, you know. So he enjoyed luxurious food. Sometimes, uh, sometimes we want to enjoy music, correct or not? Some of you, you like to listen to songs. What are some of your favorite songs? I don't know. Maybe some of you like uh, Wang Li Hong, Zhou Jie Lun, or, or whoever, or what, Deng, Deng Zixi, is it called Deng Zixi? Or whoever, la, I don't know who are your favorite singers. But when you want to listen to music, what do you do? Uh, you go on YouTube. Uh, you go on YouTube, la, you Google your favorite song. However, the prince, uh, at that time, la, by the way, at that time in India, they, were, they had no YouTube, la, they had no internet, they had no computers. But the, the prince had the best entertainers. You know, they have the best singers and dancers and musicians who can perform for him live, you know. Today, if you want to go to a concert, let's say you want to go to a concert by, uh, by who? Uh, who is a famous singer these days? Uh, let me think of a... Uh, Blackpink, uh, Blackpink, yes, K-pop. Oh, young people like Blackpink these days. If you want to go to a live concert by K-pop, you have to travel all the way, you have to buy the tickets, you have to squeeze your, squeeze your way with a lot of people, correct or not? Ah, but the Prince Siddhartha, he doesn't need to do all that. Live one. The musicians and the dancers, they go to his palace live, you know, perform in front of him. He don't have to fight for the tickets. He can sit there and enjoy the show. This is the kind of life, the kind of entertainment, the kind of luxurious pleasures that the prince would get. At the age of 16, the prince married his beautiful cousin, Princess Yasodhara. This one must know uh, the name, uh, important for the exam. Yasodhara. So this one you must know... Uh, so at the age of 16, they got married. The purpose of providing the best pleasures of life for the son, for the children, is to keep them comfortable. Excuse me. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Sorry. Okay. Was to keep them comfortable. To keep them focused on living a life devoted to pleasure. To keep them focused on living a life that is full of fulfillment of the senses. I see nice things. I eat, I taste nice things. I hear beautiful music and so on. This is called the fulfillment of the senses. Sensual pleasure. Material wealth. This is the kind of life that, you know, a uh, King Sudodana wants his son to focus on. However, what happened? However, what happened? The prince became curious. The prince became curious. Sometimes children are like that, correct or not? Children, some of you are children here. Huh? Sometimes you will ask your daddy, mommy, ah, daddy, mommy, why, uh, why, is the, why is the world like this? Why is humans, why are humanity, why is humanity like this? Why is the universe like this? The sun and the stars and the moon and so on. And why is it like that? Sometimes you would also ask why. Sometimes you would also think, wow, what you, I grew up in Malaysia, but what is the world outside like? Maybe I want to travel to Singapore. Maybe I want to travel to Australia. Maybe I want to travel to United States of America and so on. You also wonder, oh, what is the world like? So the prince also got curious. For my whole life, I have been staying in the palace. For my whole life, I have been sheltered, very sheltered. But what is out there? What is out there? I need to see with my own eyes. I need to see for myself. Let me explore the world outside. So the prince, along with his assistant, his uh, charioteer, you know, his charioteer's name is Channa. Uh, this one must know, uh, for example, Channa. Channa is his, uh, his assistant who helps him ride the horse, lah. Huh? who helps him ride the horse. So, charioteer. Okay? Chana, Siddhartha, they went out together to look at the world. Now, at this point, Prince Siddhartha saw four sights. Sights, huh? Sights means, what do you see? Four things the Prince Siddhartha saw. This one also must know, huh? important for exam, huh? must know. The first thing the Prince saw is an old man. An old man. The prince was very young at that time. He was in his youth. He was 20 years old plus, 20 plus years old. You know, like many of you here. Very young. So old, old age is something very strange to him. Something very foreign to him. He has black hair. Suddenly he sees someone with white hair. 
he has, you know, he has a smooth skin on his face, but he sees someone with wrinkles. He can walk with his back straight. His hands are strong. His legs are strong. But he sees someone who is walking, you know, walking in a very weak way, in a very fragile way. So he says, why does this happen? Why does this happen? Chana says, we don't know why, your majesty. We all must grow old and die. It's okay. Don't worry. Death is still far away. Don't worry. Don't worry. You are still very young. The next thing the prince saw is a sick man. A sick man. The prince was very healthy. He had the best food. He has the healthiest, uh, healthiest uh, lifestyle. If he gets sick, uh, imagine if he gets sick, the best doctors would care for him. Correct or not? He would, he would be healed very quickly. But now he sees someone who is in severe sickness. Someone who is in pain. The third thing the prince saw was... Even though you are a prince or a king, you will still die. Yeah, you're right. You're right. No matter your status in life, whether you are rich or poor, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're handsome, very beautiful, or you're not so handsome, not so beautiful, whether you're a king or whether you're an average uh, person, you're, you're a commoner, you would also die. This is the third thing the prince saw, a dead man. Now, the prince started to wonder, is there a way out? Is there a way to stop it? Is there a way to solve this problem? If everyone has to face these three things, is there a way out? Is it fated? Is it predetermined? Is there a way to find a solution? The prince, now he has a determination. I need to find the truth. I need to find a way out. Then he saw the fourth, uh, the fourth scene or the fourth sight. He saw a samana, an ascetic, a holy man, a spiritual practitioner, a contemplative. So a samana or a contemplative is someone who goes from place to place. Like the monks and nuns you see today, they don't have a house, you know. They sometimes go from place to place and they practice spiritual path. They practice the spiritual path. They practice meditation. They want to find the truth. So when the prince saw this samana, saw this contemplative, he was very moved by his peaceful countenance, by his peaceful appearance. He was very peaceful. He didn't have this sense of stress or this sense of anxiety. So the prince thought to himself, Maybe this is the way to find peace. Maybe this must be the way to find the solution. Now, then at the age of 29, at the age of 29, the prince decided to renounce his uh, palace life, his palace life, his luxurious life. This is called the great renunciation. In the silence of the night, Prince Siddhartha sat on the horse. The horse name is Kantaka. 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 All right. So accompanied by Chana, he left the palace and he left the city of Kapilavati. Chana wanted to follow the prince. He was very devoted. He loves the, he loves the prince. He was very devoted to the prince. He said, let me follow, follow you. Let me serve you. Let me help you. But uh, Prince Siddhartha said, no, no, no. I have to go alone. Go back with Kantaka. Go back with the horse. You have to be alone. All right. Now, Brother Lim, yes. But then after the after Chana returned to the palace, Kantaka died of sorrow. Very good. Thank you. You're right. You're right. Brother Lim is right. I didn't include that detail. Thank you for helping me to fill in that detail. I didn't put it in the slides, but yeah, this is in the textbook also. After, uh, after, Sorry, uh, after Prince Yata, uh, sorry, after Kantaka and Chana went back, Kantaka died of sorrow. The horse, because the horse has been with Prince Yata the whole life, correct or not? They were, you know, since young, he was practicing uh, the arts of war. He was practicing archery. He was practicing, you know, horse riding and all that. So he has been with him the whole life. But now, you know, the prince had to leave him. So Kantaka was very sad. Out of sorrow, out of grief, he died uh, uh, upon going back. Thank you, Brother Lim, for that addition. 
Brother, uh, Sister Ong Sim Ling, yes. Uh, Brother Ko, may I ask, uh, this Kondana during the naming ceremony, one of the wise men, right? Yes. Is it the same Kondana as one of the first five disciples? Yes, correct. He is one of the first five. You're right. It's the same, same Kondana. He's the same person. Right? You're right. Okay, it's the same person. You. That's a good question. Thank you. All right. Now, wow, this is a good class. Everyone's learning so much. Good. Now, so this Samana Gotama, now he is no longer a prince because he renounced that life. Now he is the Samana Gotama. Samana means the contemplative or the ascetic. Let me type it in the chat, yeah? Samana means ascetic or contemplative. Huh? Okay, the Samana. All right. So the ascetic Gotama, the Samana Gotama, he wanted to find the answer, correct or not? So he practiced under various spiritual teachers. So he go to learn from different teachers. Lah. So at that time, there were many spiritual teachers in uh, the time of, in India, many spiritual teachers. Even today, today, ah, you go to India, you also find many spiritual teachers. Even today, not just in India, everywhere in the world, you'll find many spiritual teachers, correct or not? So some, some religions uh, come from India. I'll give a few examples of Indian religions. Ah. So uh, Hinduism is a religion that comes from India. Uh, Jainism, also an Indian religion. Sikhism, also a religion that comes from India. And many more, and many more. There are many religions that come from India, even today. They're still alive today. These religions are still, you know, they're still alive today. All right. So at that time, also like that, Indian is a, is a place of rich spirituality. The Samana Gotama went to learn under different spirituality. I go to toilet. Sorry? Okay. Uh, when I'm, okay, May I go uh, to the toilet? Say that again, say that again. May, may I go to the toilet? I, I don't understand your question. Can you type in the chat? I, I, I couldn't understand you. But uh, here asking uh, where you can go to the toilet. Oh, oh yes, please. If you want to, yeah, yeah, please, please, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Now, when he went to learn under different teachers, he met five friends. Uh, five people joined him. Five people joined him. Kondanya, Badia, Vapa, Mahanama, and Asaji. Kondanya is the, yeah, just now a sister said correctly. Kondanya is the one who predicted he was going to be the Buddha. So when Kondanya realized that his prediction came true, you know, wow, the prince finally renounced and the prince is going to practice the spiritual path. I want to learn from him because I predicted, you know, Kondanya, I predicted that he was going to be the Buddha. Of course, I want to learn from him. So Kondanya also joined uh, the prince, uh, joined the Samana Gotama. Okay, now at some point, uh, they took up a path of self-mortification. I repeat, uh, I type it in the chat. Uh. Self-mortification. In Mandarin, it's called Ku Sing. Ku Sing. One of the paths that they, they took up, that they practiced, is called the path of self-mortification. Self-mortification means you torture your body. You torture your body. For example, uh, for example, you would pluck your hair for, from your head. You pluck your hair. Nowadays, uh, you know, monks, monks and nuns, uh, monks and nuns, uh, Buddhist monks and nuns, they have to shave their head, correct? Shave their hair. Yeah, so they are bald, uh, they shave their hair. They use a razor or use a, you know, scissors or a, or a, knife, uh, a shave, uh, uh, a razor, uh, a razor, right? However, uh, in this practice, they don't use, you know, they don't use a razor. They pluck their hair. This is one way of causing pain to the body. What are other ways? Another way is they hold their breath. Means they don't breathe for a long time. They hold their breath. They don't breathe. Okay? So it feels very painful. Another one is they eat very little. They eat very little. So they make their body very thin, very, uh, you know, unhealthy. You know, that's another way. So there are all these different ways of torturing your body. So this is called the path of self-mortification. Wait up. Excuse me. Give me a moment. Okay, so this is called the path of self-mortification. He practiced holding his breath and extreme fasting. So he was going to die uh, very soon if he continued with his practice. He was on the verge of death. Then he realized something. He realized something. This is not the path to happiness. This is not the path to awakening. Even after practicing this path, for so much, for so long, and with such discipline. He was very disciplined. 
you know, the, the, the contemplative Gautama, he was someone who is very determined. He has strong courage. He said, I am going to practice this to the uttermost. Let me go to the previous uh, slide. I will carry austerity to the uttermost. I am going to practice this path with great determination. Some of you are practicing a skill. For example, some of you might be learning the piano. Uh, you play the piano. Do you practice it with great determination? Do you practice it every day? You know, things like that. But Prince, uh, contemplative uh, Gautama, Samana Gautama, he was someone with great determination. He practiced it with great discipline. But even with great discipline, he realized, I haven't attained awakening. I haven't attained enlightenment. I haven't found the way to true happiness. So he started to think, maybe this is not the way. Okay, now I stop here for a while. Huh? Uh, this is not in the exam one, but let me ask all of you. Again, this is a chance for us to reflect, huh? brothers and sisters, for you to reflect also. Sometimes we do things that don't bring us any benefit. They don't bring us any benefit. Sometimes we do things that might even cause harm to our body, cause harm to our mind. Also, sometimes we cause harm to other people. Sometimes we do things like that. They're, they're meaningless. They're pointless. They don't bring any benefit. Do we realize it sometimes? Do we realize it? Do we realize sometimes that the actions that we do are not bringing us to awakening? They are not bringing us to true joy and true happiness. Do we realize that? So this is a question also for your reflection. If you want to share, you can share in the Zoom chat. You can also share later like, in the discussion session. Huh? If you want to share, no problem. You can share, can share. I'm very happy to let you all, uh, you know, share your thoughts, share your reflections, yeah? Okay, now back to exam, huh? back to exam. <laughs> okay, that one is for you to reflect. Now back to exam. So he decided, I am going to change my way. The Sambana Gotama. I'm going to change my way. Because this way is not beneficial. It's not bringing me to awakening. So let me change my ways. I am going to stop. Stop, uh, stop the practice of self-mortification. I'm going to stop the practice of self-mortification. I am going to start to nourish my body again. I am going to keep my body healthy again. Yeah. So, Brother Lim, go ahead. Originally, Sujata was have, once wanted to have a baby and a husband. And when she heard of a deva in a tree, she decided to make an offering to, to go to the tree and give the offering to the deva, which is actually Gautama. Good. Do you guys get that? I repeat what Brother Lim said. Uh, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, Brother Lim, you're very helpful. I, I appreciate it. Really, really. Keep it going. This is good. This is good. Keep it going. So, Sujata, he wa she wanted to have a, uh, have a family. So, she wanted to uh, she wanted to make offerings to the devas. You know what are the devas? The devas are heavenly beings. So she, when she saw uh, Gotamba, she thought it is a tree deva. Tree deva means, I, I write it down, huh? tree deva, means like a tree deity. Okay? So she made offerings, uh, but it's actually the prince Gotamba, lah, okay? uh, the contemplative Gotamba. All right, very good. Thank you, brother. Keep it up. No problem. Good. If you guys have additional information, you can also unmute yourself or you can type in the chat. Huh? If you realize, ah, oh, there's this information that is good for the exam, you can type in the chat so that everyone can learn together. Okay, that's good. Yes, Brother Dim, go ahead. I forgot to tell you that after the Buddha stopped, stopped self-mortification, his five friends who accompanied him left him. Instead. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Thank you, Brother Dim. So, he, uh, Samana Gotama decided to Take solid food. I repeat, uh, take solid food to keep his body healthy. So what did he eat? This is very important. Uh, exam might, might be, might, exam might be, exam might be uh, tested. Uh, is The food is milk rice. Milk rice. Uh, this is one exam. Uh, milk rice. So Sujata offered milk rice to Samana Gotama. Now, when he started to eat food, the five disciples become very disappointed. Very disappointed. It's like, imagine, uh, I, I want you guys to realize this. Uh, don't, some people, uh, I, I don't want you to think like, oh, the five friends are like bad people. You know, they're not bad people. They're good people. They are very determined also. They were practicing with him. They were practicing self-mortification together with the, with the, with the contemplative Gotama. You see what I mean? He together with Samana, he was together. giving 
He just thought that he was giving up from being immortal and returning back to his normal life. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sister or brother. Uh, sister Mary Ann, go ahead. Uh, I have one question, right? Yes, this, yes. Um, Kondania, right? Uh, he he um, predicted that uh, Siddhartha Gautama would be the future teacher, the Buddha. But why he let he he still uh, leave him leaves him together with the four other friends and yes. kind of ignore him when Buddha approached them at the deer park. That is my um, uh, doubt. Since, because mm. it's like you predict, right? You know that uh, this uh, Siddhartha Gautama would be the future Buddha. Um, he 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 would have uh, stay by him, you know, until he attained enlightenment and not leave him. Good question. question. Good question. Very good question. I'll answer it right now. Good question. Uh, brother Lim, go ahead. I have answer. This is because that he has all. Because Kondana has already has mixed thoughts already too, so he decided to leave. Because plus they already practiced the same the same practice for so long, so how can they accept the change? Uh, Sister Mary Ann, uh, do you want to say anything more, uh, or or else you can lower your head? Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Brother Lim got it right. How can they accept the change? Now, I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine uh, in your group project, some of you are students here. In your group project, let's say you're doing a group project with your, with your friends. Uh, in your group project, your teacher say, okay, your teacher say you must do this, do this, do this. Then you do a group project with your friend. And then when you're working, 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 and then your friend uh, go to eat. <laughs> All of you are doing work, and then your friend goes to eat, eat food, go to makan. What will you feel? You feel like, hey, hello. Do the work, lah. You know, don't don't eat. Do the work. Are you, Example, I'm gonna work. leave you and do my work and 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 do my work instead, and I work until I get it done. Exactly, you're right. I'm gonna do I my do work until I get it done. So, brother Chiwa said, you know, this is rude. How can you just leave and eat? You should be doing the work with us. So, uh, sister Mary Ann, the answer is, I I tell you the answer. The answer is this. The answer is wrong view. Wrong view. I type it in chat. Wrong view. What does wrong view mean? I explain. Huh? Wrong view means you don't understand the right way to the truth. You don't understand the right way to attain true happiness. You don't understand the right way to attain the freedom from suffering. That is called wrong view. Is it because? Yes. Is it because he the? Is it because he his destiny was not to be in, um? Is it because his that is not his destiny to be immortal? But he was trying. But he is the chosen one. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. I explained to you, ah. Uh, uh, the, the answer is not because of his destiny. The answer is because he was following a wrong way. He was following the wrong path. He was following the path of self-mortification. So even if he's the chosen one, let's yeah, say you are the... How to realize? I'm talking about how to realize. Sorry, repeat your question. Sorry, repeat your question. But how do they realize? How can Siddhartha realize for the others don't realize that they are following the wrong view? Okay, how did Siddhartha realize it, but others didn't realize it? Wow, this one is a deep question, uh, this one. Okay, uh, I will give a brief answer. I will give a brief answer. I'll give a brief answer, but this one, you all should think about it. Actually, this one is a good question for you to reflect. This one won't be in the exam, lah, but this one you can think. You all can think. Uh, later, we can discuss if we have time. But I'll give a short answer first. Brother or sister, actually, I still don't know who you are. <laughs> I still cannot see you, sorry. So I don't know whether you're a brother or sister, but it's okay, it's okay, no problem. Uh, how did someone realize and how did others not realize it? The short answer is paying attention. Paying attention. 
Sometimes when we don't pay attention, we don't realize the consequences of our actions. Sometimes when we don't pay attention, we don't realize the consequences of our actions. True. This could be the reason why the Buddha noticed, has already noticed that his body was in terrible shape already. Exactly. Sometimes we are very, we are consumed by our desire. Correct or not? Let me give an example. Huh? When I was young, uh, this one, now, now I'm, well, I hope I'm still young, but I, when I was your age, uh, uh, some of you are young. When I, are you like, when I, when I was attending Sunday Dharma school, like you all, like some of you, some of you, when I was young like you, Sometimes uh, I am very uh, uh, greedy to eat nice food. So I remember there was one, uh, one year, uh, Chinese New Year, Chinese New Year. Then uh, they had this ngaku. I don't know whether you know what is ngaku. Uh, ngaku is the food, uh, you know, one of the snacks, uh, the chips uh, for Chinese New Year. I love it, you know. I don't know why that year I love it. And I ate and I ate and I ate. I ate so much. I finished this one whole, one whole uh, container. That, I think that night uh, my parents went out. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure like, if I recall correctly. I'm not sure. But I finished the whole container. And then the next day, what happened? I got a fever. I fell sick. I got a fever. And then I couldn't enjoy my Chinese New Year already. Lah. When we don't pay attention to how our actions are affecting our body and mind, then we don't realize the consequences. When we pay attention, okay, this food is causing harm to my body. I have to stop already. Right? I have to eat a bit, but I stop. But if you don't pay attention, we say, oh, I, the taste is so good. We only pay attention to the taste. We don't pay attention to our body. Uh, then we eat and eat and eat. Uh, then, you know, something happened. So when the disciples did not pay attention to how their body affects their mind, then they did not realize it. Brothers and sisters, the path of the Dhamma is a holistic path. Let me type it uh, in the chat. Holistic path. Holistic means uh, you take care of the mind and body. Some people, they take care of the mind. They read a lot. They study a lot. They discuss a lot. They meditate a lot. But they don't, they don't take care of the body. They harm their body. They don't eat well. They don't sleep well. Some people, they take care of the body. They go to the gym. <laughs> they go to the gym. Huh? They build up wow, their muscles, their six packs. Huh? Their body is very strong and fit. But they don't take care of the mind. Uh, the path of the Dharma is not like that, brothers and sisters. The path of the Dharma is a holistic path. The Buddha says, you develop a sound mind and a sound body. Let me type it out. Huh? Why? Why do we need to develop a sound mind and sound body? Let me tell you the answer. The answer is because the mind and the body affect each other. The mind and the body affect each other. That's why. That's why. Okay, now let me get back to answering Sister Marianne's uh, question. They were disappointed because they had wrong view. They thought, Sister Marianne, uh, they thought that the way to attain awakening is through torturing the body. Is through torturing the body. So when they saw the Samana um, Gotama. Is the one like, like doing this is Kodana? That one doing this? I, I'm not sure. This one, I, you have to ask the artist. Sorry, I wasn't the one who drew this. The one, I wasn't the one yeah, who drew there this. There was picture. someone wondering who did this. And then there was one like telling the other the other monk that that he's doing something yeah so I, I don't know who are the i mean i don't know which one is which la. this is why you have to ask the the, the artist you know the, the painter I, I don't know which one is which one okay no worries let me let me finish yeah let me carry on yeah you know okay now so to answer the question is they thought that the way to attain awakening is through self-mortification through torturing the body through pain through pain so when they saw Samana Gautama start to eat, start to take solid food, then they thought he's going to give up on the path. So for them, they are not bad people. You know, they are good people. It's like a feeling of being betrayed. You know, like you are fighting together with friends and then suddenly your friend betrays you. You know, like that. So he, he took a different path. He, they thought he goes back to luxury. He goes back to his 
uh, royal ways of life, you know, his luxurious way of life as a prince. They thought, they thought it's like that. They thought that he gave up on the path already. So they were very disappointed. So they say, ah, this one, no hope, like this one, forget it, let's, let's leave him. Now, Sister Mary Ann, when the Buddha became the Buddha, after awakening, he went to find the five disciples, correct or not? But at first, the five disciples ignored him. Just as Sister asked the question, right? Why did they ignore him? The answer is this, ah. Huh? When the Buddha came, now it's after this. The, this story is after already, uh, after the Buddha became Buddha already. So the Buddha went to, went to the five disciples. He said, I have attained the deathless. I have attained Nibbana. But what did the five disciples say? That, this is what they say. Uh, this but is what they say. Ah, you did it! Turn back to your normal life, I think. Yeah, something like that. Let me, let me answer, yeah, let me answer, yeah. Now, the five disciples said this. Even when you were practicing the path of austerity, the path of difficulty, also you cannot attain knowledge and vision. Also, you cannot attain wisdom and awakening. How can you attain it with an easy way? Even when you, when you, even when you practice the difficult way, also you cannot attain awakening. How can you attain it with an easy way? Definitely not easy. That's the answer. That's it's actually answer, not yeah? easy, but but it's a balance. But what? balancing is not easy. Balancing is Correct. not easy. Correct. But balance is not is easy. easy. Balance okay. is not easy. But in the perspective of the five disciples, the five companions, it's like that. They, they think he's taking an easy way. You see what I mean? But he's not taking an easy way. He is practicing the middle way. He is not taking an easy way. He's practicing the middle way. But for them, it's an easy way. Hey, you practice difficult way, also you cannot get. Also you cannot get awakening. How can you do it with an easy way? Not possible. So at first, they didn't believe him. Does that answer your question, Sister Mary Ann? Okay, yeah? Um, yeah, kind of. Uh, I mean, it's probably I kind of overestimate Kondanya because I still think that, we, you know, he can predict, you know, with like one finger. <laughs> so... <laughs> I may have uh, overestimated him. <laughs> yeah, maybe Kondanya, at that time, he also lost faith. Maybe he was thinking, I, I'm just guessing, I, oh, I'm not Kondanya, I don't know. Maybe he was guessing, I guess wrong already. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Now, this, this, uh, this, this quote is important, uh, important to, important to uh, know, important to know. And not for the exam, lah. Uh, uh, sorry, for the exam, important no. For the exam, important no. The Buddha made a determination. He said, Let only my skin and sinews and bones remain. Let my flesh and blood dry up. I shall not permit the cause of my effort to stop until I accomplish that which may be obtained by human ability, human energy, human exertion. What does that mean? It means, I will sit here until I attain awakening. I will not get up. He made this determination at that night. On uh, in that uh, at that night, yeah, correct. I am going to sit until my flesh and blood dry up. I'm going to sit until my skin only my skin remain, my flesh, my bones, uh, my 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 flesh and blood dry up. Yeah, my skin and bones remain. I will sit until, until, until I get enlightened. Can I correct. Like I will sit until I get enlightened. You are right. You are right. Think about this, our brothers and sisters. How many of us? have this kind of focus. Uh, sometimes I recall myself, like, I talk about myself, I don't talk about all of you. When I was a student, uh, I do my homework. I do my project, I do my project. After one hour, I say, ah, it's okay, la. let me go and makan. <laughs> it's okay, la. let me go on Instagram, ah. go and see what is the latest uh, pictures or what is the latest videos. Sometimes it's like that. Uh, but sometimes it's very hard for us to persevere, right? To sit and to focus on our work. Sometimes it's difficult. But the Buddha, uh, not yet the Buddha, the, the Samana Gautama, at this point, he was very determined. He was ready already. He was ready for enlightenment. He said, I am going to sit until, I'm going to sit and practice the middle way, practice jhana, practice meditation until I accomplish that which may be obtained by human ability, human energy, human exertion. What is the importance of human ability? brothers and sisters. It means, it means that this achievement is not a supernatural achievement. It is not a supernatural achievement. It is not out of this world achievement. 
it is within this world, within the human realm, that the Buddha attained this realization. Which means, brothers and sisters, we can also do it. As long as we have human ability, human energy, human exertion, we can also attain Nibbana. This is the importance of this quote, of this, uh, of this determination of the Buddha. All right? And what happened at that night? Mara. Mara is a deva. I repeat, uh, Mara is a deva. Deva means a heavenly being. Mara is a heavenly being, but he is an evil, <laughs> evil heavenly being. Not all devas are good, uh, brothers and sisters. Some of the gods are not so good. Some of the gods are not so kind. Uh, but some of the kinds of gods are good. Uh, so uh, you have to make sure you are respecting the right gods. <laughs> Don't re simply respect all the gods because some of the gods are not very nice, not very kind. Okay? So Mara tries to stop the Buddha. Uh, not the Buddha, the Bodhisattva. Mara tries to stop the Bodhisattva. He tries to attack the Bodhisattva. He said... Uh, don't practice, uh, don't practice. Yes, Just enjoy him. your life. Yeah, don't practice. Yeah, he attacks it two times. He attacks two times. The first one is during the great renunciation, and the second time is just before he was elected. He tried to force him to stop, to quit. Wait, wait, wait. One time, the first time is what, brother? One time is? When during the current renunciation, where he tried to make him quit. Second time is? When he was about to get enlightened. Very good, time correct. He tried to attack. You're right, correct. That's correct. Thank you, brother. All right, so the first time is during the renunciation. This one, uh, just now I didn't mention it. So the renunciation, Mara also came. Don't leave, you know, don't leave, don't leave your palace. Enjoy your life. But this is the first time. This time, got, after this got more, huh? not just two times, got many, many times in the Buddha's life, the Buddha, uh, Mara came, not just two times, but these are the two times that uh, Brother Law mentioned, lah. The second yeah, time but, is under the... Uh, uh, yeah, but how did he come again after enlightenment? How did he after come? enlightenment, still Mara came. Mara is very... Oh, like, like, he asked his daughter, Hey, daughters, can you please distract him? Mara is very stubborn. I write that. Uh, and then he asked his doctors to distract him after enlightenment? No, no, no. He, he comes to persuade the Buddha and also persuade his disciples not to follow the Buddha's path. Not to follow the Buddha's path. Sometimes people are very stubborn one. Like me la, sometimes. Sometimes I know uh, I cannot do it one. I still want to challenge. Uh. <laughs> sometimes I, I know uh, I confirm cannot do it. Uh. I, I, you know, like, for example, uh, for example, uh, sometimes I have an exam, but I, I, I assume that I can uh, not do my preparation, but I can go for the exam. You know what I mean? Uh? 就是小聪明, that means rely on my own intelligence to pass the exam. So I remember once I, I thought, I, uh, this exam very easy, sure I can pass one. I know you study. Then after the exam, I, just, oh, I, cannot, I cannot answer the questions. Sometimes we are very stubborn, like, like Mara. When we realize and we face a great challenge, we have to understand that we have to improve our ability. We cannot remain in our current ability and still try to take on the challenge. That is not possible. If you want to run a marathon, for example, you have to train your body. Correct or not? You have to train your stamina. But some of us very stubborn. <laughs> ah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I can, I can do it. I don't practice. And then one day before, one day before marathon, ah, I go and train, I go and train. Ah, like that, Lord. Mara is sometimes like that. Sometimes we are stubborn. So sometimes when we look at the stories of the Buddha, we look at the experiences of Mara and the disciples. Sometimes we can also think about our own life. Correct or not? We can think, hmm, sometimes we are also like that. Okay, yeah. Let me, uh, wait, give me, give me one minute. Uh. Let me look at my slides. Uh, wait, uh. Because time is running out, I might have to stop here. Uh, we cannot finish, but we, no, don't worry. We have more, we have more, uh, we have three more weeks. Let me see what to... Okay, uh, let me share this slide. This slide is good. Wait, uh, wait, uh. Okay, let me share this slide. Uh, wait, I share now. Uh, this slide is good. All right. Uh, I'm going to wrap up in five minutes. Then, last, uh, 
sorry for the time up because uh don't have time for Q&A, but it's okay. I promise next week got, got more time for Q&A. Sorry, because uh, I, I, the time is a bit, the time is a bit tight. Okay, but, 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 although we'll end at 10 p.m., brothers and sisters, although we'll end at, sorry, uh, 10 p.m., but I will stay back. Lah. So if some of you really have questions, I will still be here to answer your questions. Can or not? Can or not? Sorry, today the time is a bit delayed, but it's okay. We will, we will, we will go on first. Uh, you have more questions, we can continue to discuss in the WhatsApp group. Now, under the Bodhi tree. Uh. Okay, so the Buddha, uh, the Bodhisattva was practicing under the Bodhi tree. Then Mara came. Mara says, it would be far better to live. Enjoy your life. Don't practice. Don't become the Buddha. The Buddha, very difficult one. You know how many people try to kill the Buddha? How many people don't follow the Buddha's teachings? The Buddha said, ah, you must think right thoughts. You must practice right speech. Many people don't follow Buddha. Very tiring one. Don't be a teacher. You know, your students should disappoint you one. Don't, don't, don't be a Buddha. Live a better life. Live a, a, a happy life. Live a happy life. Uh, then what did Buddha say? What did Bodhisattva say? The Bodhisattva said, I will proceed with the fight. I have faith. I have energy. I have wisdom. The Bodhisattva said, uh, sorry, this one is the Mara said one. Mara said attack. This is the 10 armies of Mara. Okay, this one we cover next time. We, we don't have time now. Then the Bodhisattva said, the Bodhisattva said, from land to land, I shall wander, training disciples far and wide. The Bodhisattva said, I will become a Buddha and I will train disciples far and wide. Today, there are Buddhists, there are Bud Buddhist centers, there are Dharma practitioners all over the world. Because the Buddha did not listen to Mara. Because the Buddha listened to Mara, did not listen to Mara. If the Buddha said to Mara, true, ah, maybe I don't need to become a teacher. Lah. Maybe I should just ah, go back to become a king and conquer the whole world. Today, there would be no Dharma center. Today, there will be no YBAM. Today, there will be no TBCM. Today, there will be no Buddhist center. Your, your Buddhist organization, I'm not sure where you're from. Some of you are from uh, Dharma schools and Pali schools. Your Pali school, your Dharma school will not exist today. If, if the Buddha gave up on his path, if the Buddha had given in to Mara, but the Buddha didn't, thankfully, thankfully. Uh, the Bodhisattva said, I shall train disciples far and wide. This one we skip, uh, we do next time. This is called the Jaya Mangala Gata. Uh, this one won't be an exam. Uh. This one won't be an exam, but I'm just sharing. Sometimes you hear this chant. It's a very popular Theravada chant. It goes like this. Uh, ba Fung Sahasma Binim Mita Sayudhantang Okay, this is a very beautiful Gata. Gata means like a song or a poem. Very beautiful chanting. This actually tells the story of the Buddha's life. The victories of the Buddha's life. Mara was attacking the Bodhisattva. But with the power of the Dharma, the Buddha conquered Mara. The Is Buddha it after that, the Maha tries Mara. to not tries to um not this not tell the Buddha, but try try to tell his disciples instead that he's following the wrong way? Both, both. After that, Mara came to the Buddha and his disciples. Both also got. Yeah, yeah but how yeah, but yeah, but when? When that's a good question. Uh, this is your homework. Go and find out. Then maybe next time you can share with me. When there are a few more times, few more times you can go and find out. This is your homework, ah. Uh. Go and find how out. Ma how okay. many? in total? I can't remember. Uh, sorry, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, I, I can go and look it up. There are a few more times, but I can't remember the whole uh, the the total times. Yeah, but you can go and find out. Okay. Now. So when we chant the Jaya Mangala Gata, we are, brothers and sisters, we are reminding ourselves of the Buddha's victory. The Buddha didn't give up. The Bodhisattva didn't give up. So we are using his story to inspire ourselves, to persist, to persevere on our journey. Okay? Now, let's move on. Okay, this one is the final, uh, final, oops, not this one. Okay, uh, wrong Wrong slide. Let me share another slide. Let me find it. Huh? This is the final uh, episode uh, we're going to share today, which is the enlightenment. Um, don't worry, don't worry. More to come. More to come uh, next time. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Now, in that night, in that night, the Buddha saw, uh, the Buddha had three knowledges. I repeat, uh, three knowledges. Three knowledges. The, the, the Pali word is Te Vidya. Te is three. Vidya is knowledge. Three knowledge, Te Vidya. Now, what are the three knowledges? I won't cover it now. Uh, this one is your homework. Go back and go and read the textbook. I'll go and read the textbook. Find out what are the three knowledges, okay? For your, for your own learning. This one, exam, important. Uh, must know, uh, for exam, uh, must know. Uh, okay, go and find out. We won't do it now, okay? In the Buddha's, uh, that night itself, he, had, he saw three things. Three parts of the night and, he, and the three knowledges. By dawn, by dawn, by the rising of the sun, the arising of vision and knowledge happened for the Buddha. The Bodhisatta is no longer just a Bodhisatta. Now he is a Buddha. At this night, by dawn, he is now the Buddha. The one who knows. The one who is awakened. The one who is enlightened. And this is the song of victory that the Buddha uh, chanted or the Buddha recited. Uh, this is a narration uh, under the full moon of Besaka. So, at what age, brothers and sisters, at what age did the Buddha become the Buddha? Type it in the chat right now. What age? Everyone Five. type it. 35. Okay, everyone got it. Okay, uh, everyone knows the answer. Uh. 35. At age 35. Remember the Buddha, uh, the Bodhisattva left the palace at age 29. Renou the renunciation at, at 29. Six years later, six years of practice, finally he found, uh, found his goal. He reached his goal of awakening. 35 years old, also under the full moon of Vesaka, delusion was dispelled and wisdom arose. Darkness vanished and light arose. Now, the Buddha had arrived. The Buddha had arisen in the world. And this is the song of victory. O house builder, you are seen. You will not build this house again. For your rafters are broken and your rich pole is shattered. My mind has reached the unconditioned. I have attained the destruction of craving. Now, what does this mean? House builder, rafters, Rich pole, what do they mean? Uh, do your work. Uh, do your work. Uh, this one next week, we'll go home and go home and find out. Go home and study. Okay? Now, I'll end it here. I'll stop it here. I'll, I'll stop it here. But I want to just give a few reminders uh, for the WhatsApp group. Okay, I will be sending out a few things in the WhatsApp group uh, throughout this week, uh, before the next one. I will be sending out quizzes. Quiz, uh, quiz means uh, you can do the quiz, online quiz, or uh, you can go and practice. Okay? I will also be sending out some notes and the slides some notes and slides for you to revise, okay? So these are the two things I'll be sending out, notes and also quizzes for you to practice. If you want more help, you want more guidance, you want more support, feel free to text me, type, type in a group. If you have questions, you can also type in the WhatsApp group so that we can discuss. Other students also can feel free to help. Some of you know a lot. You can also help, we can help each other in this study group, okay? If you know the answer, you can also help to answer other, question, other people's questions, okay? So uh, I'll be sending out more notes and quizzes you can practice, for you to practice. But I cannot cover everything. You yourself have to do the practice, yeah, brothers and sisters. Please, uh, don't put all the burden on me. <laughs> you yourself have to uh, read the textbook. You yourself have to, uh, what do you call it? You yourself have to do the past year questions. Okay, then, then, we can, uh, then we can discuss together some of the questions that we have. Okay, let me pause here. Let's take a group picture first. Uh, then uh, we can uh, answer questions. Let's take a group picture now. Then we can answer any questions that anyone might have. Okay, let's turn on our camera. Let's take a group picture. Uh, Brother Chiwa, you can also help to take a group picture. I'll also be taking a group picture on my end. <sighs> Whoops, I've been speaking for one hour plus. Oh, man. Okay, it's all right. So after the group picture, yeah, I will open the floor to any questions for anyone. So if you have more questions, I, will, I, will, I, can, I can stay back for you, okay? Although we are times up already, but it's okay. Uh, I can still stay back for a few minutes. You can answer your question. You can ask your questions. And of course, next week we'll meet again. Lah. All right. Good. Okay, excellent. Okay, I think I think that's all right. I'll wait for 10 more seconds. I'll wait for 10 more seconds. How is it going, Brother Chiwa, Brother Frankie? Okay, ma. Uh, I introduce Brother Frankie. Brother Frankie, you wait, say hi, wave to everyone. <laughs> 
Brother Frankie, uh, wave your ah, okay, ah, yeah, this is Brother Frankie, ah, he is the chairman, the, the, the leader of uh, YBM, KL, and Selangor. Ah. So I'm very grateful to him. We have worked together before, yeah, so this is, I'm very grateful to him for this opportunity as well. And Brother Chiwa has been working very hard, okay, so, okay, good. So let's take a picture now. I think, I think, uh, I think that's it. All right, good. I will, I will queue, lah. I will queue. So, so I'll count to three. Everyone look into the camera, lah. look into the camera, yeah, don't look at your screen, look in the camera, lah. smile, lah. one. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, stop, stop chatting, stop chatting. Uh, don't, later it will pop up. Wait, uh, wait. Uh. Okay, yeah. Uh. All right. Smile, everyone. One, two. Okay, yeah. Uh. One more. Uh. Smile, everyone. One, two. Okay, that's the, that's the group picture. Okay. So those of you who need to leave, you can leave now. It's actually the end of the class. Uh, but please do your work. Do the, read the textbook and do the past year. Two, two things. Read the textbook, do the past year. Okay, practice. Then next week we'll come again. And next week, I promise I'll have a longer Q&A session so that people can ask. Okay, so just to check out, uh, anyone has questions or anything you want to ask about the exam, you want to ask about the preparation, you want to ask about the syllabus, you want to ask about the format, or you want to ask about the content uh, of today's uh, session, please uh, raise your hand and unmute yourself. Okay, go ahead. Are there any questions? Yeah. If no one, no questions, also no problem. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you uh, who have attended the session, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I wish you all the best uh, in your preparation. Keep, keep coming. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think. Yeah. I'll be sharing the syllabus. Yes. All of you have the textbook. Yeah. Just to check. All of you have the textbook. Uh. If you don't have the textbook, please let us know. We can also send a textbook. Yeah. The textbook is important. Because all the content is in the textbook. You have to read the textbook. So I want to check out, uh, uh, Sister Saw, uh, do you have any questions about the senior level paper so far? Or any, yeah, any uh, resources or support you want to ask? If you have, if you want to share, yeah. Yeah, Sister Saw. Yeah, no I'm people, right only no five percent. Why do we have to know eight? Hang on, hang on. I will answer your, uh, I'll answer your uh, session later. Your, your, your name is Minlock, right? Minlock, I'll answer your, your question later. No problem. I'll answer your question. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll, ask, I'll answer your question later. Sister Saw, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I would like to know the marking schemes for uh, sections two. Oh, the, the essay question. Uh. Ha, ha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this one I also don't know because I'm not the organizer. So I asked, I asked the I asked the organizer, I asked Brother Chiwa to help to ask the organizer. They, they uh, don't I have a mark scheme. Lah. But they said uh -huh. the main points according to the textbook will be will be the answer. That is good enough. Lah. That is the answer. That means the main points in the textbook, that is good enough. Lah. Yeah, that's what they answered. Lah. I, I, I'm not an organizer, so I also don't know the marks thing. Yeah, does that help? Do you have the textbook, Sister Saw? Uh, got it, got it. Yeah, that's good, that's good. So then the main I have, points there, yeah. Go ahead. I've got one more question. Hmm. Uh, like the Bikuni Sangha lasts for how many hundred years? Ah? The Bikuni Sangha lasts for around 1,000 years. Uh, but the, the answer is only have 200, 300, 400, or 500. Huh? We will become monks now. Bikuni Sangha 500 years only, man? Wow. I, I, okay, I'm not sure. I need to check, sorry. But, I, but in my memory, uh, it's, not, it's not 500 years then. It's 1,000 years left. I need to check for you, sister. So good question. Let me check for you. All yeah. right. Maybe, All right. maybe you can snapshot the, the, the picture. You can send send to me or something. Uh, I, I, I will. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. But in my memory, it's, it's 1,000 years for the Theravada tradition. La. For the Mahayana tradition, the Bikuri Sangha is it, still, it's still um, mm. what do you call it? It didn't uh, it didn't uh, uh, break. La. Let's put it that way. It didn't break. It, it didn't die out. You know? It still lasts. However, however, in recent years, in recent years, in the past about in the past uh, one fifty to one hundred years, there have been efforts to revive the Bikuni Sangha in the Theravada tradition. Yeah, yeah. So some of you might know about it. So the the specific question, I'm not sure. In my memory, is one thousand years, but it, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So let me check for you, Sister Saw. Thanks for the question. Thanks for the question. Thank you very much. That's yeah. all for now. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just a note for the just a note for the senior level students. Uh, I think there might be one or two or three of you. I'm not sure. 
if you want a, spe a separate class, means like a class just for the senior level one, I can also organize one depending on the timing. Because I know all these questions might be a bit more basic because it's junior and preliminary level. But for the senior level, if you want a special class, we can have a separate class. Can I can offer to do that, yeah? So uh, brother, why you help me to contact also some of the senior level students, yeah, brother, brother Jiwa, so that uh, maybe we can have a few more students. Maybe we can have a specific class uh, for the senior level one, okay? So for you senior students, if you want to have a, a, set, a specific class for senior level, Please uh, let me know. I can I can uh, I can uh, do a class. Okay, uh, not a class lah. Just a tutorial. Okay, good. Sister Lim Ming Wei or brother Lim Ming Wei. Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Mudita one Lim Ming Wei. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I, actually, I'm um, Ming Wei's father. I was sitting with him. Oh. Um. It's my son. Yes. No. I, I, what captured my attention was the. The first question, which is not is in the test, but you mentioned something which captured my attention. Go ahead. I can't remember it suddenly because there's so much that being shared. Okay. Maybe I have to go through the video again if there's a replay. Uh, I, I don't think so, right? Yeah, we will be posting it uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Good. Yeah, I'll try and catch up then. Thanks. Ken, no worries, no worries. Thank you for the question. Okay, now, bro uh, brother Minlock, Minlock, uh, uh, let me answer your question, yeah? Good. Minlok, I'm curious, uh, uh, if you don't mind, if you mind, it's fine. If you don't mind, can you tell me how old you are? Ten. How old are you? Ten. Ten years old. Uh, which drama school do you attend? Mahin Drama. Oh, Mahin Drama Bali, the Bali School. Okay, okay. Very good, very good. Wow, wow. That's excellent, that's excellent. Glad to, glad to have you with us. You are ten years, you're ten years old. When I was ten years old, what was I doing? <laughs> I'm trying to think what was I doing when I was 10 years old. <laughs> I'm not sure. Thank you. He knows okay. anything. Yeah, he knows a lot. Yeah. I, when I was 10 years old, I, I don't know. I don't know so much. Yeah. <laughs> I am not like, but it's good. It's good. Minlok, Minlok, when you reach my age, uh, maybe you can become I don't know teacher. the five reset, but I only know like some of the brother's life. I don't know. Yeah. You, for your exam, you have to know five presets. Must know, uh, five presets. For your exam, must know five presets. Okay. Now, uh, Minlok, Minlok, next time when you grow up, maybe don't need my age, don't need my age, yeah, maybe 10 years later, when you're 10 years old, you can be a Dharma teacher already. Is it A for, for Sorry? junior? But Sorry? you see it was 8 for junior. Yeah, 8 presets for junior, correct. Are you junior yeah, level eight, or preliminary but level? But why is for, for normal people, why, why we need to have 8? We're not, we're normal people. Okay, I, I answer your question now. Now, for the exam, for the exam, preliminary level, you must know five precepts. Junior level, you must know eight precepts. Okay, this is for the exam. For the exam, huh? Okay, now in practice, let me answer the question of practice. Now, Minlok says we are normal people. Why do we need to know eight precepts? Let me answer, yeah? Uh, before that, let us review the five precepts. Let us review the five precepts. But why do we have... But no, why? No, no, normal people have five, us. not eight. I answer now, I answer now. Okay, I answer now. Five, okay. First step and we ask for okay. This is also a good question. Deep question. Now, uh, let us review the five precepts. Okay, uh, I'm doing the Dharma. This one must know, uh, Dharma, Dharma part, uh, for the exam. Five precepts are number one, Panati Pata. Panati Pata means striking down living beings. So you abstain from Panati Pata. Pana means breath. Breath, uh, breath. Pana. That's why we say anapanasati. Sati means sati means uh, recollection or mindfulness. Ana means breathing in and out. Anapana means breathing in and out. So anapati sati means mindfulness of breathing in and out. Now, panati pata. Pana means breathing. So living beings, beings who breathe. Panati pata means striking down living beings. So killing living beings is uh, first precept. So you abstain from Panati Pata, okay? Abstain from Panati Pata. Second precept, Adina Dana. Wait on. <clears throat> now, Adina Dana. Dana means giving, generosity, Dana. Can you see my background? Pandanamic. Pandanamic is a project by Mita to raise funds and distribute supplies and resources to those who need help uh, those who need our aid during this pandemic. Okay, so pandemic 
This is the name of the project, of course. Dana means giving or generosity. Adina dana, adana, adana means not given. I repeat that uh, adana means not given. You know, let me let me write, let me write down. Not given. So adina dana means taking what is not given. Taking what is not given. So uh, second precept, abstaining from taking what is not given, stealing. All right. Third precept is kamesu michachara. Kamesu michachara. Kama means kama means sensual or sexual. Oh yeah, is in a prayer book. Yes, correct. Wait, 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 wait. Let me type it first. Huh? Okay. Now, kama means not kama. Kama double m uh, is actions. Uh. Kama k a m a one m only. One m is sensual or sexual. Micha chara. Micha means wrong. Micha means wrong. Wait, uh, let me write. Uh. Micha means wrong. Right means sama. Sama is right. That's why we say sama diti, sama sankapa, sama vacha, sama kamanta, and so on. Sama is right, right view, right actions, right livelihood, and so on. Micha is wrong. So chara, what is chara? Chara in Malay, chara in Malay means the way you do something, correct? Not chara means the way. So in Bali, chara means the way you conduct yourself, your actions, your conduct. So micha chara means wrong conduct. So kamesu micha chara means sexual misconduct. Okay, so you abstain from Kamesu Michachara. Now, fourth one, Musa Vada. Vada means your speech. Vada means your speech. Musa Vada means false speech. So you abstain from false speech. Now, the fifth precept is a long one. Can anyone remember the fifth precept? Who remember the fifth precept? Very good, very good. I abstain from, 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 from taking liquor. Abstain from taking liquors, right? Alcohol. Very good. Sura Meraya Majja Pamadatana. Okay, what is the meaning? What is the meaning? Sura Meraya, these are all different types of alcohols. Uh, spirits. Spirits are not the, not the being spirits, are, but the spirits are <laughs> alcohol spirits. Uh, uh, liquor, alcohol, spirits, are, these are all. Sura Meraya Majja. Majja is... Uh, ah, I'm not sure what is Majja. Uh, this is your, your homework also. Find out for me what is Majja. I need to find out what is Majja. Okay, find out what is Majja. This is your homework. Ah. Go and find out. Ah. Now, Pama Datana. Let me type it. Ah. Pama Datana. Pamada. Pamada, yeah. Pamada means. Okay, all these Pali words, you don't have to know the, you don't have to know the specific meaning. Ah. I'm just explaining for you. Pamada means heedlessness. Heedlessness. Or, wait, ah. let me write it. Ah. Heedlessness or non vigilance. Or non carefulness, where I typing it, I typing it up, uh, or, or forgetfulness. Okay, Pamada, this is Pamada, yeah. Pamada means you are not careful, you are not vigilant, you are not watching your mind, you are forgetful, you are unmindful. This is Pamada. Yeah, this is Pamada. You know that we are not forgetful, but we are actually, we just need to improve. Say that again, Milok. Say that again. Everyone just needs to improve. Because the eighth one is the is the is the least avoidable one because you can you just need to improve. You and just need to what sorry? Improve to stop you just, that. I am not I don't actually understand your question. Does anyone understand Milok's question? No, I am P R no, yeah, I, I know what is improved. I know what is improved. Yes, but I, I don't understand what's the question. To avoid the last preset. The last preset. To avoid the last preset, yes, go on. Mm -hmm, I think. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 last I don't understand. <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Later, later, uh, later you can ask again. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, let me go on first. <laughs> okay. Tana means basis. Tana means basis. Okay. So Pama Datana means a basis for heedlessness. That means an intoxicant. Something that will make you lose your mind. Something that would impair your judgment. This is called Pama Datana. 
So Surah, Meraya, Majja, Tamadatana. Four things. Everything must abstain. <laughs> Surah cannot, Meraya cannot, Majja cannot, Tamadatana cannot. All intoxicants cannot. Okay? Understand? Huh? All right. Surah, Meraya, Majja, Tamadatana, Meramani, Sikapada, Samadiyami. Okay? Good. Now this is the five precepts. Five precepts, all Buddhists would take it as their practice. Okay? Now, Minlok asks, what about the eight precepts? Why do some people take the eight precepts? Okay, what are the eight precepts? Uh, this one you find out. I, again, uh, this is a homework. For the people taking junior, uh, you have to know. The one taking junior, uh, you have to go and, go and read. Uh, what yeah, are the eight precepts? No, no, precepts? people have five instead of eight. Yes, he can answer. Yeah, junior got eight. Go and find out your three. Uh, three extra, go and find out your homework. Why do we have eight? No, no, the, the three extra ones. So the eight precepts are five plus three. The but five are the same. Why do we same. have eight instead of five? I explain, I explain. Five wait, five. wait, wait. No. Be patient. I explain. I explain. Wait, wait, wait. I explain. I say. Wait, wait. I get there. I get there. <laughs> Don't be too excited. Okay. Now, the eight precepts are the five plus three. You need to find out what are the three. And and the third precept is also different. Huh? for the eight precepts, the third precept is also different. Huh? not the same as the five precepts. Huh? go and find out. Yeah, go and find out. Okay. This is your your work. Huh? For, oh, for is it because your your, your, your tasks? Yes. Is it because the third precept no. is missing no. from the five? It's no. missing. No, no, that's not the reason. That's not the reason. Eight. Let me explain. Let me explain. Uh Gan Yu Jun. Gan Yu Jun. Yes. The five are the fundamentals. Oh, what does fundamental mean? Stop. Let me explain. Huh? Fundamentals. Just let me live Fundamental means uh, fundamental means they are fundamental to a life of stability. They are fundamental to a life of virtue. They are fundamental to a life of character. It doesn't mean uh, you do these five things, you attain Ibana. No, 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 not so easy. But it means it means in order to have a, a grounding in virtue, a grounding in integrity, to have a life in integrity. Sorry, to have a life of integrity, these five principles you must uphold. Yes, okay, so this is what I mean by fundamental. Now, why do some people have eight precepts? Eight precepts are opportunities for us to undertake a more intensive spiritual practice. A more intensive spiritual practice. Wait, uh, let me type it down. So let me repeat that, uh, let me repeat. The eight precepts are opportunities for some people, for us, to undertake a more intensive spiritual practice. What does more intensive mean? For example, uh, for example, normal days, normal days, you go to the gym, you lift the weight. Example, like uh, you lift the weight, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, 10 kg. <laughs> 10 kg. Is 10 kg every heavy? I don't know, actually. 10 kg. Now, some days you think, mm, let me challenge myself. Let me try 15 kg ah, intensive. This is what intensive means. That means to intensify your practice. Okay, why do we do this? Why do we do this? Okay, before I say the why, let me tell the when. When, when do we do this? Sometimes we do it on uposata days. Uposata days. Uposata days are, for example, the new moon days, the full moon days. Okay, these are called the uposata days. Sometimes on Uposata days, some people, some lay people, disciples, uh, they take the opportunity to practice the eight precepts on Uposata days. This is one example. Another example is, uh, Brother Lim, this one, uh, I forgot the answer actually. <laughs> later, we, later we find out. Actually, this question, I forgot the answer. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a name for it, but I forgot the answer. Sorry. Uh, uh, this one, uh, another question for you all to find out. It's V A. S E K A, just remembered it. Okay, now one example is Oposata. Another example is during meditation retreats. During meditation retreats, sometimes uh, you are required to take the eight precepts so that you can quiet your mind a bit more. Quiet your mind a bit more. Okay, this is uh, when. When means the occasion, uh, when we practice it. Now let's go to the why. Why? Uh? Two reasons. Uh? I type it down. Uh? I'm typing it. I'm typing it. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Two reasons. All right. 
Okay. The first week, why? This is the why. Why do we practice the eight precepts? Number one is we want to imitate the Arahants. We want to imitate the Arahants. Brothers and sisters, the Dhamma is not a path of information. Many people think uh, we, to be Buddhist, we need to have a lot of information. I need to read more, read more, which is important. Informa I'm not saying information is not important, but that is not the path. Many people say, oh, we need to, I, I need to know a lot. I need to read a lot. Then it's enough already. Information. Now, information is important. Huh? Information, is, information is foundational. Information is vital. You need to know. Of course, you need to know the, the life of the Buddha, the Four Noble Truths. You need to know. That is information. But the path of the Dhamma is not a path of information. The path of the Dhamma is a path of imitation. Imitation. Imitate who? Imitate who? Imitate the wise. Imitate the wise. Imitate people who are wise. Imitate people who are peaceful. Imitate people who are liberated. That is called Please imitation. Stop. We okay. follow, wait up, wait up. We follow but their thoughts. Sorry, sorry, Please Milo. stop now because it's um before yeah. 10, 10 25. See, people cannot finish. No, so, okay, if you, if you want to leave, you can leave. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Anyone can leave. I'm just answering the question, the additional questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, we imitate the ones because we, oh, sorry, we follow. The thoughts and the speech and the actions of these wise people, that's called imitation. So when the, the Arahans are people who, for example, the Arahans, they don't eat afternoon. They eat before noon. You know, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't listen to music and entertainment and watch movies. They, they, they don't, uh, you know, they don't have entertainment, like that kind of entertainment. They also don't sleep on luxurious beds. They sleep on low, low places. They don't sleep on high and luxurious beds and so on. So we imitate them because we want to be like them. Because we want to be like them. Okay. Now the second reason is to intensify our spiritual practice. Seclusion from the senses. What does seclusion from the senses mean? It means we quiet our senses. We don't stimulate our senses. Like our vision, our sense of seeing, our hearing, our sense of hearing. Okay. We don't stimulate our hear seeing. We don't stimulate our hearing. We quiet it. When we quiet our senses, then what happens? Then our mind can settle down better. Our mind can settle down better. So that we can go into a state of samadhi. Samadhi. Let me type it up. We can go into a state of samadhi. So this is the purpose of the eight precepts. Okay, oh, number one, imitate the arahants. Number two, seclusion from the senses. Okay, now, uh, Minlok, yes, ask your question, Minlok. Hmm. Your question? Did you just answer that? Okay, good. I've answered the question. Okay, uh, Chua Feilin asks, uh, how much is the passing mark? This one, uh, it depends on the all the students' one. There is no fixed mark. There's no fixed score. It depends on all the students. Yeah. But, but, uh, but usually, you need to at least answer correctly half the questions. Lah. You need to usually correct, correctly answer half the questions, then you can mark, pass. Lah. Usually it's like that. Okay, Felin? Can I? Ah? Okay. Thank you, yeah, Felin. Now, uh, Brother Lim Yu Kang, you asked the question, which tree is also known as the tree of enlightenment? Thank you for the question. The answer is, I forgot. <laughs> uh, I forgot the answer, actually. So I, uh, for all of you, please go and find out the answer. Okay, then you can, then you can uh, prepare for your exam. Lah. I actually forgot the answer. Sorry, yeah, so sorry. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, any more questions? Bodhi tree is the name, correct? But you see, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, let me clarify this. Uh, the Bodhi tree is not the name of the tree because uh, Pu Ti Shu, in Mandarin we say Pu Ti Shu, in English we say Bodhi tree. But Bodhi is not the name of the tree. We call it the Bodhi tree, it's the name of the tree, but it's not like the, it's not the scientific name of the tree. You know what I mean? It is called the Bodhi tree because the Buddha got enlightened under that tree. The Buddha got enlightened. Under, uh, the Buddha got enlightened under tree. So we refer to that that kind of tree, that species of tree. We call it the Bodhi tree, the Bodhi shuk, the Bodhi tree. Because Bodhi, Bodhi means enlightenment or awakening. Thank you, one Bodhi. Thank you. No problem. Anyone can leave. Uh, don't worry. Uh, yeah. You just yeah. You can type in the chat. You can just say uh, take leave. Uh, no worries. No worries. Uh. Uh, 
Bodhi means awakening or enlightenment. So we say that is the Bodhi tree. But there is a name for it one. Mar Sister Mary Ann used Pipala tree. I'm not sure whether it's correct or not. I, I forgot the answer. Maybe it's the Pipala tree, maybe it's not. I, I don't know. Yeah. So you all find out. Lah, huh? I'll also go and find out so that uh, I can I can answer the question. Okay. So uh, yeah. Thank you for the question, yeah, uh, Brother Lin. Okay. Any more questions? Any other questions? If not, uh, we can we can call it a night. Lah. Uh, continue to ask questions, continue to practice uh, your past year. Then we can, then we can uh, all score well together. I hope, uh, this is my hope, everyone score A. <laughs> I don't know whether this is too much to ask. My hope is all, all my students score A. <laughs> well, this is, every teacher hopes like that. Uh, every teacher hopes like that. I used to be a high school teacher, you know. Uh, let, i tell you a bit my, my story. Uh. I used to be a high school teacher. I taught in SMK Permas Jaya in Johor, in Pasir Gudang. Uh. So my hope every exam is all my students score A. Uh, never once my wish was fulfilled. <laughs> never once my wish was fulfilled. But it's okay. It's okay. Don't give up. Don't give up. I hope all of you will score A. Ah, huh? don't give up. Uh, put in the put in the effort. Okay, good. Any more? Any more? Uh, questions or any? Okay. Anyone wants to discuss or share? Just now I asked a few questions, right? In the in the in the study group in the tutorial, I asked a few questions. For example, like if you you want to choose between becoming a king or becoming a spiritual teacher, which one would you choose? Or you know things like that. If you want to share your thoughts and your opinions, also you can share. Huh? If you want to unmute yourself. Huh? No pressure, no pressure. Okay. Anyone? Anyone? You can uh, raise your hand. If not, uh, it's okay. We can close this session. Uh, what subject? Eugene what, asked what subject. I am no longer a full-time teacher, but last time, you know, a few years ago, I was a teacher. I taught mainly English and a little bit of mathematics as well. Eugene, that's my, that's my uh, education uh, background. Yeah. Uh, Brother Wong, now I don't teach college. No, no, no. Now I'm in another another job now, another career now. Yeah, another field, another field now. Yeah, okay. Sister Wendy, Mukalinda tree. Uh, is it correct? Uh? I don't think it's the Mukalinda tree. Like. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think it's the Mukalinda tree. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I need to check. I need to check. I, I really, I really forgot. Yeah, Banyan tree might be, might be correct. Banyan tree might be correct. Okay, Sister Mary Ann found the answer. Buddha was seated under the famous Pipala tree at Bobaya. Very good, thank you. So Pipala tree is the answer. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, nice one, nice one. Good job. Okay. All right. So it's not Mukalinda tree. Uh, Mukalinda tree is one of the weeks. So in the seven weeks after the Buddha's enlightenment, one of the weeks, he was under the Mukalinda tree. Yes. Uh, but not... Not during the enlightenment, okay, but one of the ways it was under Mukha tree. Yes, that one is correct. Okay, Sister Wendy, all right. Okay, anyone wants to share anything or ask questions? You can share uh, if you want to share something. Okay, uh, if you don't want to share anything, I want to ask for feedback. How was today's session? Do you want me to change anything in the class? Do you want me to do something differently next week? Do you have any suggestions, any feedback? You can share now, or you can also share in the WhatsApp group. You can say, oh, brother, call, or brother, we can. Oh, you can call me, brother, call, you can call me, brother, we can. We can, you can call me, we can call me, call, no problem. Huh? Uh, you can tell me, you can say uh, in the group, WhatsApp group, you can say, okay, this is a good class, uh, don't have to change anything. Or maybe next week, we can try something else, you can suggest, uh, you can suggest to me, huh? you can suggest your feedback to me. Or if you want to uh, unmute yourself and share your feedback now, also can. If you have any suggestions, any feedback, you want to say it's a good class, it's not a very good class, what you want me to change, no problem, you can share. Okay? Anyone? Any feedback? Yeah. If not, uh, if not, uh, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, Sister Mary Ann, I saw you're taking junior. Brother Lim Yu Kang, which level are you taking? Which stage? Just to check. Brother Lim Yu Kang, yeah. Do you mind letting me know which stage are you taking? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sister Erlina Ong, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Preliminary. Sister Erlina Ong also looked. Looks quite young. La. <laughs> so I hope I hope very soon you will you will take my place. <laughs> very soon you will you will you will take you will you will run this class <laughs> so that I, I don't have to run anymore. <laughs> I can retire. Okay, Tung Yu Tung Yin Ping. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Yeah, sister Elena Ong is only 10 years old. Very young, very young. This is very good. Huh? You guys are so young and you guys are learning so much. This is very good. You are the future hope of the sasana. You are the future hope of the Buddha's community. All right. Okay, good. Thank you. Sister Elena, where which uh Dhamma school are you from? 
Just to check. Uh, also, Mahindrama Party School. Is yes. it? Oh, excellent. Wow, Mahindrama is a very good school. Huh? All these very, very, uh, very, what do you call it? Very diligent students. Very diligent students. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, brother. You can uh, Yeah. Can take leave. Can take leave. No problem. No problem. Okay, Sister Mary Ann, are, uh, are you referring to... So, uh, the past year papers come with the answer, the, the ABC answer. Uh, yeah. So, we, we, we will send it out. If you want, uh, yeah, we'll send it out. Yes, we'll be, you, will, you will receive it. Yeah, we'll send out the past year paper so you can practice, okay? Can we clarify the uh, answers? Because sometimes I think the answers, the suggested answers, actually I got, but the suggested answers seems to be incorrect, some of them. Ah, I, I understand what you mean. Okay, Ken. So if there are some, uh, yeah, there are some answers you think might be wrong, you uh, you raise it up, then we'll, I'll, we'll try to find out an answer for you. Yeah. Yeah, maybe sometimes the answer could be wrong. And sometimes you know our mistakes, you know? Yeah. Ken, Ken. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Erlina Ong. Yeah. Thank you for listening uh, uh, throughout the class. Good, good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we can discuss one. Yeah. So all of you, yeah, please, please, please go sleep. Please go sleep. Get a good rest. All of you who have questions, like not sure, unless uh, you're not sure uh, this question correct or not, you can take picture, you can snapshot, you can also type it down, type in the WhatsApp group and all that. We will, we will try to we will try to address your your uh, your your queries, okay? Your your inquiries. Thank you. Very good. See, uh, Brother Winston said, very good session. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Winston, for your feedback. All right. Okay, lah. Just that's all. No more. Okay. No, no more. All right. So, uh, Suki Hontu, everyone. Take care, everyone. Uh, I wish you all the best. Continue to work hard. We have a few more weeks, two, three more weeks. You can do it. You can do it. All right, Suki Hontu. Tomorrow is public holiday. Uh, take your take your opportunity tomorrow. Make a determination. I will not arise until I finish two set of past year paper. <laughs> example, example. Uh, make a determination. Become like the Buddha. I will not arise. I will not, you know, I will not go to eat lunch until I finish two set of exam paper. Example. <laughs> this one, this one can be your determination. Okay. All right, Suki Hontu, brother and sister. I hope you are you take care. May you be blessed. May you uh, may you have the energy, may you have the energy and may you have the wisdom to prepare for the exam. All right. So uh, anyone can leave. I'll be I'll be discussing with uh, Brother Chiwa and Brother Frankie. Oh, Brother Frankie, yes. Brother Frankie is not in now. Yeah. But I'll be discussing with Brother Chiwa about the session, but no worries. Yeah. Uh, Ken, thank you everyone. Good night.